Welcome to The Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Maria Valletta, and our sponsor today is St. Luke's University Health Network. And joining us is Director of Community Health, Dr. Bonnie Coyle. Welcome to the show, Bonnie. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Very and nice. we're in the kitchen cooking with Patrick Fury, mm -hmm. who has nectar and Berwin. And what are you going to make for us, Chef? Um, we're going to make uh, tuna tartare, uh, and we have some really fun ingredients, so we're going to make a really fun salad with uh, maitake mushrooms. And then we're also going to make an open-faced dumpling as well. Great. Yeah, Sounds okay. healthy. Let's get started. So what we got here is tuna. We're going to do a tuna right. tartare. Sushi grade. Um, I use yellow fin as opposed to blue big eye or blue fin. Uh, blue fin, for one, is, is one of those that are not on the list for sustainability. We use all sustainable fish at the restaurant. Um, yellow fin I like. It's a little more fatty, less red in color, though. But this is a beautiful, beautiful yellow fin. So if you get the real good yellow fins, then you're... Beautiful. Beautiful fish, yeah. right? Yeah. So what I like to do, this recipe actually you'll see, um, if, once you look at it online, um, the recipe itself calls for two pounds of tuna. Okay, so we're going to take That's the tuna. That's a lot of tuna. <laughs> it's, invite all your friends. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut them in about, uh, just about a quarter inch cubes. Okay, you need a really sharp knife, which helps um, doing this. Uh, yeah, you quite a special <laughs> knife there. Love yeah. it. That one way and then come right back. So this is all you have to do to get the tuna tartare started. Just started, exactly. Cut up your tuna. Yeah. And, you know, it's nice to have it all, you know, when, whenever you're cutting anything, when, whenever you have a recipe with anything, make sure that all the cuts and everything that you're cutting is a consistent cut. This way it gets blended together and you won't get one more or less of something. That's a great tip, time. Chef. Yeah. So, Bonnie, yeah. tell me about the programs that you're running right now. With I'm in charge of the community health department and we have mobile medical and dental vans that go out to some of our urban and rural schools to give health services to children who don't have insurance or who don't have good access to care. You're able to reach more than just this local community. You're out there. We're out there across the Lehigh Valley, mostly in Allentown and Bethlehem, but also up in Bangor and Panther Valley. How about some of the other community programs you're doing? We have maternal and child health programs where we have nurses go into the homes and visit for two to three years with moms from their pregnancy all the way to when the baby's two, three years old, helping them to understand parenting skills and how to get their child connected to health care and just how to have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy child. That's a fabulous program. We have our jalapenos, scallions, green onions, um, wasabi, wasabi <laughs> and uh, we have um, avocado, which avocado, um, and it's, this is fun, these are two fun ingredients that I have always kind of found that go really, really well together, avocado and olive oil, believe it or not. Really? Now, in an Italian uh, tartare, you'd have a crudo, which would be predominantly olive oil, salt, pepper, and um, with a um, kind of a, uh, a Spanish style one, you'd have more avocados and lime, but this I guess, lime, yeah, exactly. Ceviche. So what we're going to do here, um, as far as making the actual um, the mix for it, is that we're going to use a little bit of mayonnaise just to kind of keep it emulsified. Um, we're going to use the wasabi here. Now this is actually fresh wasabi, which is like basically wasabi looks a lot like um, ginger root, mm -hmm. so it comes out ginger. Now using more or less wasabi itself um, is going to make it a little bit more spicy and hot. I like spicy. You like spicy? Oh, I love spicy. Kind of gives you that, that little burn and helps your, uh, you know, if you have um, an allergy or <laughs> it's clean your nose. rush. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to make this a little spicy. Um, from there, this is basically our, our, our sausage here. What I also like to do, too, is that we're going to use the, the uh, avocado um, as a garnish in the plate itself separately. But then I always found like avocado a little bit in the sauce itself or what you're going to make. Um, is gonna. It's also really nice because it gets a really good creamy, beautiful flavor together. So you're almost kind of making a little bit of a, a, a guacamole kind of sauce here, and that gets throughout the flavor of the whole dish itself. So right now what we're doing, we have um, added a little bit of um, lime into the um, into the sauce itself. Then we have a little bit of ginger. This is going to come in in a couple of seconds later in our recipe. So then basically what we're going to do is we're going to just take this and I like to combine this into the tuna as opposed to the other way around because this way you have a little bit of control on the actual how saucy it gets. Saucy it gets. <laughs> exactly. You still want it to be very very um, red and, and for people to identify it as, as really nice tuna. We're going to take a little bit of olive oil, hit that in there and I put um, some sea salt already into the sauce itself. So we're going to take our Avocado. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually slice this down. 
I'm gonna take all these slices. I like to use a ring mold. You can use pretty much anything and just lay them down on the bottom of the, the dish itself. I'm gonna use this on top. We're gonna leave this right in here and we're gonna do one more fun thing. We'll be back with more from St. Luke's University Health Network. We now return to the chef's kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. These are actually masataki mushrooms. They grow on the um, east coast of Japan and on the west coast of the United States. They grow out of uh, um, pine trees. And if you I smell them, seen them. Yeah. they smell just like pine. Like if you were gonna cool. cut a piece of pine in your garage, the wood smell, that's, yeah. that's the kind of the, the smell that they get. Does St. Like Luke's um, support any community farms or do some sort of agricultural work? With the we community? have a community supported agriculture program where every summer we work with a local farm to offer a CSA program to our employees. We had over 100 employees participate last year. Wow. Su supporting that local effort to buy fresh, buy local. That's a great turnout too. Yeah. And then we also have an organic farm right at one of our campuses that we partner with Rodale to operate. So we're actually incorporating organic products from that farm into our cafeterias across That's the network. so great. Trying to get that healthy message out there for yeah. our patients and, and employees. Eating within like your 100 mile radius, you can say you're doing that. That's yeah, really great. Absolutely. That looks so here we go. beautiful. That's That's solid. So I see you put the ginger right on top. Mm -hmm. sure. And what else are we making today? We're gonna Chef? make a little open-faced um, dumpling. This is kind of utilizing the top and the bottom of a shrimp. So we're gonna make a really quick shrimp shumai dumpling. The best way to actually do shrimp is just press it. Let me see. And they just kind of mush. Yeah. <laughs> they just kind of mush. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. We're gonna go with a scallion. And the basis of any dumpling is, is really, it's, it really comes down to just is scallion. That's, that's the most important ingredient to it. Minced ginger. So we got scallion, chilies, cilantro, ginger. I'm gonna use an egg white. The albumin from the egg white and the protein is going to help it stick together. It smells really good. It must be the oil. It's it's actually the ginger, is it the um, ginger? scallion. We do a little bit of sesame oil just mm. to draw up. These are pea tops. These are an organic pea top. You're going to take the pea tops mm -hmm. and just the very top off and just drop them in there because we're going to use those. So taking the stem off. Yeah, just the stem off. Okay. Yeah. Like with all the other greens that we use at Nectar um, are from a totally natural farms, organic farms. There's a one Blue Moon. There's another True. True Leaf, which is a great farm. And then there's a lot of hiking trails yes. here as well, right? Yes, we have a program that the hospital supports called Get Your Tail on the Trail, where we're trying to get people more physically active by getting out on our local trails. That's so fun, Get Your DNL Tail on the trail, trail. 165 <laughs> miles long, and we're encouraging people to get out and walk parts or all of the trail as a way of being more physically active, as another way to promote their health. I think that's really great. And who that's knew that we had so many trails right around in the year in our backyard? That's it. And it's cheap and fun. So right. it's a great way of getting out with the family. Anyone can do it. Anybody yes. can do it and uh, get the whole family involved. So. Plus, you know, you're looking at like birds and little, right. you know, out in nature things and, and, and the time goes by so fast. So a shumai is actually just a little cup. And on the next one, I'll even show you a little closer. So we're going to take our. You have to show us how to make one. <laughs> yep, I will. Yeah. So basically what I do, what I like to do with this is, you know, I always like to kind of have the identify, identify um, what you're cooking with when, you know, when your guest sees it. So I like to use the second half of the shrimp itself and just stuff it. And really? Then, yeah. And then what you have is coming out of there is exactly what's inside. So you got a little... Okay. Little, a little basket. Show me how to make one. So here we and go. Then Bonnie can make one. Actually, right. We're all going to have to make one. So it's really important to get the the, dump, the wrapper really, really wet okay. on both sides. So just then water. Just water. just water. Then you're going to fold, 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 mm. fold, <laughs> continue folding, all the way around, and what you'll find is you'll end up with a basket. Now is here this rice or is this? Um... This is actually flour. Okay. Yeah. There's no egg in it, but there is egg in the. Uh, in the mix. In the yeah. mix itself. So just the egg white. Right, right. Okay, here you go. All right, let's start it taking. Here you go. All right, fold. Mm -hmm. okay. Fold. Yep. Fold. You Continue all folding all the way until you, until you hit the end. And then you have a little basket. And then we're throwing in here. Is this a test? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly, we... exactly. So we're gonna, I'm gonna scoot around to see here. Shumai mm -hmm. looks and one thing is like you know, again with uh, shumais themselves. But you're quick. Uh, mine might be getting I've a little lopsided. I've got that lopsided. perfectionist <laughs> issue, so then I'm like making, trying to make right. everything look perfect. We're gonna pop it in here, 
Yeah. And again, like you know, there's a couple of ways of, of making them not stick on these. Um, that looks like on a these purse. steamer. <laughs> exactly. Um, and one is you can actually just use either. How's that look? That looks great. Really? You did a great job there. Cool. Oh, yours is even yours more good. Yours looks good. Oh, it looks great. Oh, just flat, spot. flatten the bottom a little bit in your in your hand. There you go. I'll do that. Okay. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just stuff it with a little bit. I got the approval. I got chef's <laughs> approval. This is fantastic. All right, let's yep. stuff this guy. Yep. Get in there. All right. I think that's all he's gonna hold. Okay, your turn. All right. <laughs> this is fun. All right. Did you you just stuck the whole shrimp in there? Is he gonna yeah, fit, or you, do I need just, to cut uh, him a little bit? Just put a little space in there and <laughs> get it in there. There you go. Good job. All right. Nice. All right. Okay. We're going to rub the bottom with a little bit of the oil. Fancy steamer. There's a couple that you can use parchment paper, too. I'm going to get that in the steamer. You can use parchment paper. For On the bottom of it, you just have to cut out the great. size. That's mm -hmm. perfect. Great. Good job. Yeah. First time, really. <laughs> So how so long you're not going to call the trail me back, program? huh? You're going to be oh, cooking shows on your own. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do it without you, Patrick. <laughs> how long has the Tail on the Trail been? Um, we've been, been in existence. We've been doing it for two years now. The first, we do it from May to October, giving everyone six months to try to log 165 miles. And if they do the full 165 miles, either walking, biking, or running then they get some prizes for being healthy. Really? And so we just finished our second year and had well over 4,000 people participate. That is so great for the community. I'll have to, have to get my tail I'll out get there. Get your tail on the trail too, <laughs> yeah. We'll return with more from the Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. We're back with more from Chef Patrick Fury. One other little thing that I, that I really enjoy about, you know, some of my travels over to, um, when I was in Asia, nine times out of 10 out of all the dumpling houses and places they didn't use soy. So it was, it was just non-existent. They were using vinegars, really high end, nice vinegars to dip your things in. So that being said, there's a lot, they use a lot less salts in their foods in general mm -hmm. across the board. So it's really just the natural salts that you're getting out of, you know, the products themselves. And it's, it was, uh, um, and it was kind of one of those places, like, when I was there, I was in Taiwan for a week and I felt like really good by the end of the week, because I was just like, kind of, why do I feel, you know, I just felt really good because um, the food was just so, and, you, and it is true, like, you know, if you start eating healthy and all of that, you just, uh, it kind of doesn't take yeah. long to feel it good. It just takes a couple of days yeah. when you're eating right. really healthy foods exactly. to start to feel that effect through your whole body. Right. So we have, you know, a couple more minutes on these. This is something that also, you know, something I brought back from Taiwan, and it's Ooh, really, they're just making rice vinegars, but they're adding like ingredients like cinnamons, they're, ingre they're adding ingredients like carrots and things like mm -hmm. that. And when you really smell them, they start smelling like like cider vinegars and things, and yes. they really put a lot of. So are they lot infusing of, it? Is that what they're doing? They're, yeah, well, they're infusing it when mm. they're when they're fermenting and making it, and um, they, and it's really kind of wow. it's a, it's just a you know there's apples and there's apples, and when you start you know finding those ingredients um, that they have there, you know there's there's rice rice wine vinegar and then there's rice wine vinegar, mm. and so that's something, and so we'll get an opportunity to um, taste that. Um, so this is the very best. It's one of the best Rice I found. Vinegar. Yeah, yeah. So that's a lot of fun. So, so this gonna, is what we're going to use for dipping then. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So what I'm going to do that. is um, I'm going to take a little more of that ginger that we have, and I'm going to slice them up, and we're going to make our little dipping sauce okay. right now. Let me grab my knife. I w I'm curious to see what this dipping sauce is like because I actually stay away from the soy when I'm at restaurants. Sure. Um, I just don't want it to overpower the food. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to, you know, ingest all the sodium needlessly. Right. So, sure. And and I feel like having the flavor to me is more important of right. the actual what right. I'm eating. You know, the, the sure. dumpling or the sashimi mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Yeah, and I, and and you know, I, I think uh, you know, having having a really fun, good vinegar that's not super overpowering. It's like anything else. It's like wine. It's like, you know, when you're making some kind of fine um, liqueur, um, that just fresh. Um, unprocessed um, kind of those things just kind of work hand in hand if you have the right products so we have some really fun ginger in there and then we're going to just take the vinegar itself pour it right over the ginger it's such a darker color than what I'm used to it's yeah amazing. it's really fun yeah and actually minute by minute second by second that's actually kind of blooming together so when we're ready to dip our, our um, shumai into there we're going to really get a lot of fun, different flavors. A little ginger working. packed in there. Yeah. Great. So we'll bring this over here to our. Did you want us to make any more dumplings? Yeah, why don't we? Let's yeah. make one more each. Okay. And these are fun, yeah, you, you know, the steamers where you can get multiple yeah, levels. Right. These are 
working nicely here. Um, you know, you have multiple levels on steamers, and you can kind of just do the whole family. You've got quite you know. a fancy one over there. What's this that? This one is fun. Yeah, this is actually one I got in Taiwan. Um, this is actually made from uh, masataki wood from Japan. It's not bamboo. Um, and it's a uh, gentleman like the who, same because it's similar bamboo. to the name of the yeah it mushroom. is actually yeah because it's actually the similar tree that the mushroom comes off of ah. actually and um, and this is really an art that's um, you know kind of like there's very very few handmade steamers today that are you know soaking the wood bending it and actually making them out of wood as opposed to bamboo and the difference you know some of the things when you start getting into steamers is the flavors of the wood, really? when you smell it, get into the actual dumplings themselves. So mm. if you smell that, that gets into the dumpling. Mm. You know, and again, nice. you know, dumplings, you know, we can use um, any ingredient to stuff these with. We can use vegetables, we can use, and you know, it doesn't have to have egg in it. You know, we can use, because um, all you have to do is just make sure there's not a whole lot of moisture in the vegetables and kind of stick them into the shumai and let mm. it steam out. And again, we can do closed dumplings as well. We can I do love vegetable this. stocks, we can make little soup dumplings. Um, and steam them, and you're really getting like you're not getting anything. Um, you're you're just tasting the pure pureness of what you're putting in there. I love itself. the food education you give us, Patrick. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> just like you guys <laughs> educate <laughs> the community, you <laughs> know. It. Right. It's it's that whole it's health outreach thing. So important. It's educate people about healthy eating and healthy living. I grew up with it. I I was really lucky that my mother did it, and now, you know. And I'll pass that on, you know, when I have kids. Right. It's fantastic. Generation to generation. Okay. So, you know, a little bit about, you know, some of the fun, fun <laughs> textures and ingredients with, with uh, dumplings themselves, whether you're making vegetable dumpling, whether you're making fish mm -hmm. dumplings. Um, you know, there's, um, I like to use water chestnuts and the crunchiness of it yeah. when, you know, when you're done cooking yeah. it, so it's not just kind of one consistency. The water chestnuts. Did you put those in? I yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. I did put some water chestnuts in there. So when you're, when you're tasting them, you get a little crunch here mm -hmm. and there, and they spurt out a little bit of moisture in them too, which is a lot of fun. Um, the basic, you know, the basic recipes of them, I mean, really number one is scallions, and then you can kind of work into the, you know, sesame, little sesame oil is fine, um, cilantro, and, um, the pea tops are really fun because they get real sweet, so we'll make a little salad with them. And then I think you need a little bit of consistency of like, or you need a little bit of um, marriage between you know some different flavors going back and forth, especially with you know with the vinegars and back. You know, are we ready there. to plate, chef? Yeah. So with this, um, with the pea tops themselves, we can make um, we can make a little salad out of that. Okay. We can actually use some of the ginger vinegar in the salad to, to use simultaneously. And you kind of have your plate all ready to go. Just serve it and you're ready, you're ready to go. Use a little banana, banana leaf just so it doesn't slide. Stay tuned for more with Chef Patrick Fury. We're back with more from the Chef's Kitchen with St. Luke's University Health Network. So we have our, you know, our uh, tartare with avocado. That is just gorgeous, um, the, isn't the it? Masatakis. The layers of colors. Yeah. And then your uh, vinegar, and then and this is really kind of a fun way to eat. It's just kind of a lot of little different things. A bite here, a bite here, a bite, and it doesn't really take long to, to put together. All we're missing is chopsticks. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Well, I feel like we're in Taiwan. Work. This is exactly. great. Thanks That's for bringing right. it to us Cheers. here at the chef's kitchen. Well, the tartare. What's fun about it as a dish itself is you want to just pull some of the salad off. That's fine, um, and you eat that. Um, but you know, you can eat it as like the both components together. So great. So let me give you another and, too, just yeah. in case you want to. And on the salad itself, it's just a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of lemon spritzed so on there. Chef, and I'm digging in, and I want to try this mushroom. So I'm going to cut a little piece of him. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I always, I always um, associate the flavor of that mushroom is kind of like when my dad was in the uh, workshop and cutting those pieces of pine, making you know, making a table or something. It's that, it's that smell that comes right through, and it just kind of builds right through your your whole <laughs> nostrils and mouth and. Just a really, mm. really fun mushroom. Mm. Yeah. Go ahead, taste that. I want to try some of the mushroom. Well, that is yeah. so good. Mm. Yeah. I love the mushroom flavor. Yeah, is that fun? That is fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah, you have to taste your own creation. Mm. A lot of bright, that fresh really flavors. Tasty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm ready to go shumai style. Mm -hmm. So, what I would take is take one of these. Okay. And just dip it right in. Just so, grab your fork. Should I just use my fingers? <laughs> you can do whatever you like. Yep. Yep. I feel like with this whole shrimp thing yep. going on, this looks dangerous. Right. Mm. Hot, hot, hot. It is hot. Really is good. It, hot? it is hot. Mm hmm. Mm. 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 It is Go hot. Mm. 
Mm-mm-mm. And the gin, the, the vinegar I get the really crunch. makes it. Mm -hmm. The crunch of the, the water chestnuts. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, Napkin. <laughs> again, yeah. And the, really uh, the vinegar good. is really, really mm. the um, the star. I, I think, love yeah. I love ginger, so mm -hmm. that's fabulous. Right. I love ginger too. Right. And then even if you wanted to, um, you know, combine some of the ginger mm. with the salad itself, you know, and again, that's what it's all about interaction eating, and um, you know. Combining some of the pea tops with that, the pea tops are real sweet and fun. So, just a matter of like, you know, and again, it really is interactive. Eating. Thank you, Patrick Cherry, yes, for bringing us great, healthy Asian food. Thank you. We're making our dumplings at home now, mm -hmm. thanks right. to you, right? <laughs> and thank you for bringing us um, the health community programs that you do. St. Luke's University Health Network is an amazing, amazing network of health and community outreach. I really appreciate you being here, Dr. Coyle. Thank you. It was so fun. St. Luke's University Health Network is the oldest healthcare provider in the Lehigh Valley. With six hospitals and over 200 outpatient facilities and a fleet of medical vans, St. Luke's can serve all your family's needs. And as the area's largest provider of medical education through our Temple University affiliated medical school and nation's oldest operating school of nursing, we're training medical professionals to care for your family's future needs. My health, my hospital, St. Luke's. The nice thing about St. Luke's is our philosophy of their food and natural and, and local ingredients and presenting the public with a natural good diet that actually preventative medicine, not just medicine. And preventative medicine is the best. You know, when you find great food, you find that actual organic food, those artisans making product without chemicals and making it healthy for you and how you uh, live your life.